I mean, this is the most significant anti-gun violence bill that Congress has voted on in 30 years. Um, it's not just one change in our gun laws. It's five different changes. It shows um, that um, ultimately uh, democracy doesn't allow 90 percent of the American public to not get their way for too long. That was Senator Chris Murphy on Morning Joe with my colleague Joe Scarborough earlier today on the bipartisan gun legislation he helped craft and negotiate after the bill cleared the first hurdle to becoming law last night. The Senate voted 64 to 34 to advance the bill with 14 Republicans joining Senate Democrats. If passed, it will enhance background checks for people under 21 years old. It will direct millions of dollars toward helping states implement red flag laws. It'll close the boyfriend loophole, expand resources for mental health care and school school safety, and toughen penalties for evading licensing requirements. Leaders in the U.S. Senate say they hope to have the bill passed by Saturday. It would be the first piece of major federal gun legislation passed in nearly 30 years. Joining us now, our friend Fred Guttenberg, his daughter, as you all know, Jamie, was killed in the Parkland school shooting. Claire is still here. Fred, this would not have happened if you hadn't, if you hadn't loaned your voice to this crisis, and I, I just, I need to know that you know that today. Um, I worked with some really amazing people, and 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 I lent Jamie's voice. Um, I, I, honestly, um, I would give anything to go back to being a goofy dad. Um, <laughs> but but Jamie was the toughest human being I knew, and. Uh, Jamie and I, we did this together with amazing, amazing people, including my dear friend who you just showed, Chris Murphy, uh, and people who he trusted more than I did, and I give him credit for that. Because, Nicole, I was on your show with Senator Murphy back in, I think, December. Yeah. Um, and I was challenging him then to give up on the effort to reach across the aisle and just to go to the floor and force a vote to break the filibuster and all of that stuff. Um, he was right to continue working it. Candidly, I have been um, pretty aggressive with how I feel about Senator Cornyn, but in fairness, I've always said, um, I will publicly embrace any human being who does the right thing on this, and, and I look forward to seeing Senator Cornyn and just giving him a big hug, because, <laughs> because I just, I, I can't say thank you enough. Say more about what you think changed the calculation of 14 Senate Republicans. What, what do you think was different this time? You know, it's a great question. Maybe they also realized that the idea of reducing gun violence isn't an affront to the Second Amendment, that the idea of saving lives isn't going to hurt legal, lawful gun owners, and that the idea of seeing children with their heads blown to smithereens is something we shouldn't feel is okay to live with anymore. Um, I, I will tell you, I think since Parkland, when you look at the work of all of the amazing kids and the adults who have really fought like crazy to tell the truth about what it is we want, about what it is we hope to do, which candidly is nothing more than save lives, I think it finally broke through. We, we get the, the 64 votes last night, that's 14 Republicans, but it would have been 15 um, but there was one absence, but it'll be 15. Right. It may even go to 16 or 17. Yeah. And we'll get Republicans in the House as well. This is going to be a bipartisan effort. It's so important. And, and you know, I, I remember that interview with you, and um, I don't think I played an objective host in any way. I, I saw it the way you saw it. Um, um, but I, I want to ask you about your journey and your fight, because it's always about Jamie. We, we talk about Jamie more than, than we talk about any individual bills or really any, any politicians in either party. Um, tell me about your journey. This morning I woke up and I cried like a baby. <laughs> I'd actually been very emotional all day because the significance 
of what is happening. Um, you can never remove it from why I now do what I do. And the four years ago, on February 15, 2018, I went to a vigil in Parkland, Florida, and when there, the mayor asked me if I wanted to speak. And I remember everything hitting me there at that vigil, like what really, fight, what happened? Like it hit me, this was gun violence. And I walked into my house that night and I said, I wanna break the back of that gun lobby. I used a few other words, but <laughs> we'll clean it up with here. And, and that's been my mission ever since. And I'll never forget, um, President Biden, during the campaign, he promised me, he said, during my administration, we are going to sign gun safety legislation. Um, and it's been the only thing that I've been able to focus on since, because gun violence isn't going to go away. You know, we're going to say, think about this, Nicole, the success of this legislation is gonna be based upon things we'll never know. We'll never know the right. people who don't get killed. We'll never know the families who don't get broken, but it's going to save lives. And I just, I'm truly, I can't believe we are at this moment. And I can't, and I look forward to being able to do more now that we've broken through this 30 year wall.